Hello you, it's me. Today we're going to talk about Prosper's Demon by K.J. Parker. This has been on my pile, my to-read list for a long time. I finally got a copy when I saw the review that Slowly Red did. Uh, so I'll drop a link to his channel below. Go check him out, he does great reviews. Uh, so this is pretty much a recommend by him, because it really sold me. Short review for a very short story, it's only about 100 pages long, it's a very small book, uh, but I'll try and keep it as spoiler free as possible, uh, which I think I should be able to do. It's set in a world where the existence of demons is pretty much widely accepted. They can enter and take control of people's bodies, force them to do things against their will, either for the demon's entertainment or as a larger part of the demon's plan. But in direct opposition to this, there are people born with the power of absolute authority uh, that can cast demons out of themselves and others. In the face of a threat from one of these exorcists to a demon, the demon can try and leave peacefully, uh, but if not, they can be extracted, which comes at great physical cost and may even result in the death of the host. So the exorcists have to constantly weigh up uh, the good their actions will do versus the intentional harm they cause as collateral damage. And these people leave a very mixed trail behind them as they travel a land of healing and destruction on the same page. Which means they're sort of revered and shunned by the public almost in the same way as a witcher. But they're seen as more of a necessity than that because they're the only thing that can combat the demon threat. The story follows an exorcist who is performing his role in ridding the land under his jurisdiction of demons, and learns of a larger plot with demons working together, one of whom is a demon that he has a very personal vendetta against. A son has been born to a king in this land, uh, and a philosopher, engineer, artist, all-round genius called Prosper of Shunts, is called in uh, to help raise the boy as the first philosopher king and usher in a new era of peace. But unbeknownst to the royal court, the tutor is possessed and the demon inside him has a plan to corrupt the child. And it's down to the main character to really foil this plan, uh, which would be a big win for the demons and a step in the right direction towards their end goal, whatever that may be. Before I get into talking about this book properly, um, KJ Parker is a pen name. This book was written by Tom Holt, and I didn't know that. Uh, and I've actually read other books by Tom Holt. I've read Little People and Grail Blazers, uh, which I read a long time ago when I was like 13, 14, and I really loved. He's a really witty, intelligent guy who writes in a very similar vein to Terry Pratchett. Uh, and yeah, so that was a lovely surprise. So I'll first talk about the world build. It doesn't feel like a totally fantasy land because there's a lot of place language, title language that feels very Germanic Italian. And to me, it almost feels like it's sort of a medieval Renaissance setting. But that could just be an assumption on my part because I don't think there are any explicit discussions at all about architecture, about style. But assumptions or not, the fact that it felt very Germanic um, did give it a similar feel to me uh, as Uprooted by Naomi Novik or The Binding by Bridget Collins. I think if you like the setting of those books, you, you'll probably like this one too. In terms of the demonic side of it, the take on the exorcist ability is quite original. Uh, people are born with the ability of exorcism. Uh, and can do it from birth, and it just needs to be refined, but they are born with an absolute and innate power. They expel demons from hosts, who flee to new hosts, taking shelter in vulnerable people uh, after their damage during the extraction process. And a question really burning for me while I was reading this, which I don't think was addressed, is can a demon survive outside of a host at all? And I think the two different answers to this question actually give the story two different feels. If they can, and they don't need to possess us, then yeah, we're fighting the good fight. But if it's this species' only means of survival, then 
surely we should be trying to come to some kind of compromise and we're wiping out a creature that can't help what it does. You're introduced to the main character in a very catcher in the rye way, um, where he discloses instantly that you probably aren't going to like him, and he's a bit of an unapologetic asshole in his own words. He's self-deprecating instantly, but instead of his actions making you hate him as he says they will, I ended up feeling more and more sorry for this guy as the book went on. He tells you about his resentment, about being born into a role, having his destiny taken away from him, presents his behaviour as horrid and inexcusable, but then the book slowly unveils more of this guy's past, and you start to understand why he is like he is, and why he does what he does, in such a way. So on one hand, you've got his resentment towards his ability, and on the other hand, you've really got a personal stake that he has in this, which becomes more and more apparent. And those two things mesh together, and you kind of get this character who takes almost a sick enjoyment in what he does. And with that nonchalance and low-burning disgust for his opponent that he shows, this book really kind of has Constantine vibes in quite a big way. That's what I was thinking of most when I was reading this. So I really loved the character build, I think it was done incredibly well, and one of the only problems I have with this book at all is that it's so short, and I want to read more about this guy, and I could easily read a 600 page novel about the unnamed exorcist in this book, because I think he's just great. There's a theme in here of, during conflict, opponents shaping each other, you shaping the personality of your enemy, your enemy shaping your own personality both gaining some degree of sympathy and having a better ability to manipulate the other. It raises questions about immortality versus mortality and the human's inability to see the big picture because we don't live as long as these demons who cannot die and we sort of have the inability to look past the end of our own life. But I think the biggest theme in this book is the lesser of two evils theme allowing some people to get hurt to save a larger number of people making that choice, and the idea of collateral damage. Whether it's ever okay to form an alliance that goes against everything you believe in order to pave the way for the people that come after you. And the fact that the book revolves around these kind of questions makes me wonder if the title of the book is a deliberate attempt to make it sound like a thought experiment. Yes, it's about a demon that is in a man called Prosper, but it sounds almost like Schrodinger's cat, Rocco's basilisk, Newton's cannonball, Avicenna's floating man, Prosper's demon. I really enjoyed this, I wish it was longer, um, it was a window into a world that I would love to see more of, a short chapter in a character's life that I would love to see the whole of, but knowing the author, and his absolutely wild writing style across such a wide range of subjects, we will probably never see this guy ever again. So I'm going to give this a very high three stars. Almost four. Not quite four. A high three. So that's it, just a short one today. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more reviews coming all the time. I'll drop the link to my Twitter in the description. I'd love it if you follow me on there as well. If you've read this book, tell me what you think. It is quite new. It was published this year. Uh, check out Slowly Red. I'll link his channel below. Thanks for watching. Hope you have a great day.